Now, welcome to another Down the Rabbit Hole video. I posted something recently about a thing I own that starts with the letter V and ends in the letter X, the Vitamix, and it suddenly reminded me, hey, I haven't done a Vectrex video for a while. Um, that starts with a V and ends with an X, so that's my lame uh, segue. Uh, this is Tsunami, which I have done a video about before. It's a, a nice homebrew that is practically Tempest, but on the Vectrex. And what's really nice is they've actually put in code where you can actually select a spinner instead of just a joystick. And you can modify an Atari driving controller and sit there and play Tsunami, which I will attempt to do here. There we go. Very, very nice. It's, it's a really good version. And I'm very glad that we have something like Tempest that's playable on the Vectrex. The only downside is, this is a very awkward control scheme, and um, it, it, it's not great. I mean, uh, I'm a little bit, you know, kind of off kilter with all this stuff sitting here. Now, um, there are a number of other games that use the driving controller, and I really want to start playing them, but this balancing everything on my knee, it's just not working. It's, it's not very... Um, ergonomic and it in in something that's uh, a lot more complicated than this like say for example those those new driving games Knox and Death Chase uh, those are actually games that do use this same control setup and I don't think I'm going to be able to play those and bounce th balance this stuff on my knee this is just not going to work it's okay for tsunami did I get them it's okay for tsunami oh I'm dead um, but yeah, this, this just isn't really a practical control scheme. I mean, the controls are fine, but uh, having these two things kind of sitting there on my lap, it just, it doesn't work. It's, it's really not, not doable. Uh, however, as you can tell from my thumbnail, I came up with a solution. Uh, when I was visiting my uh, sister, her husband has a workshop, and I just thought, hey, wait a minute. Why don't we uh, try out a little scheme of how to make this control scheme uh, more palatable? All right, so basically what we've done is we've got, this is going to be the top piece. Cut that off just moments ago. I'm going to be sanding in a second. And this is going to be the bottom piece. Uh, it's kind of a rougher, crummier thing. So basically, and just cut them on the bandsaw there. So that's going to sit on top. And the idea is we're going to draw the shape of the Vectrex controller and the driving controller into this wood and cut it out like a big jigsaw, glue it on there, and that's what's going to be sitting on my lap. And the only thing that worries me is a bit of a wonkiness to the wood there. I don't know if that's going to like come up as we do it, but who knows? Let's uh, give this a whirl. Now I'm going to do some sanding on this. There we go, that's the sanding done. I've switched over to a voiceover because uh, my brother-in-law had the radio playing and YouTube with its licensing, music problems, etc. Anyway, uh, so yeah, here's what we've done so far. We've got the, um, the board in a good position. I think maybe we left the board a little small. That driving controller is looking a little close to the edge. Regardless of the size of the piece of wood, we've traced out where we're going to put the, uh, both controllers. I think that Atari driver looks like it's going to be a little close to the edge at the bottom there, but I guess we'll give it a whirl. Now, my brother-in-law insisted on filming me doing the cutting, as if to imply I was the one doing all the work, but that wasn't true. He actually did the vast majority of it, but... Uh, I thought I would at least humor him and show me cutting wood to... I mean, I did some of it, but hardly that much, really. Yeah, there he is. There's Graham. He was actually doing the vast majority of the work here, so... Total props to him, not only for the use of his workshop, but also for actually doing the vast majority of the cutting of this piece of wood here. And there she is. It's a little worse for wear. Got a couple chips here, but I think we can make that work somehow. 
Uh, yeah, so Vectrex controller fits perfectly in there. Atari 26 uh, driver controller does fit there. Now, the only snag is it's a little weak, but when it's glued down, it'll be fine. Um, so what we're going to do is when we glue it to the, the other piece over there, we're going to just put the controller in this side. I mean, the Vectrex controller fits perfectly. We don't need to worry about that. But the driving controller, we're going to just set it in so that we know how much flex that needs to be. And then as the glue is applied and it's clamped down and all that stuff, then I'll just pull the controller out. Um, if I get a bit of glue on the driving controller, that's not a big deal because those are like a dime a dozen. Glue on a Vectrex controller, that would be bad. So I'm going to, that one we know is A-OK. -okay. We just got to make this one work now. One gluing job later, we've got our finished product. Uh, this isn't going to win any beauty contests. Again, we got those little chips there and stuff, but we have one very solid thing that sits nicely on the lap. And I was worried, remember I said earlier, this was slightly warped and I was, wasn't too sure that the, um, the glue was going to hold, but here we are like uh, a good 12 hours after gluing. It's solid as can be. Um, this does appear to be slightly bent open, but that's a good thing because we have put the controller in here. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put both controllers in here just to show you the final product. Um, but uh, it, it looks like it's slightly a gap or a gape, whatever the right word is. That's on, that's on purpose. I was also very worried. This is quite a thin little wall here, but uh, the actual uh, piece here did keep that pretty structurally sound. I'm really impressed. So yeah, it's um, it's all one piece now. So let's put in our controllers. First, the Vectrex controller. What's interesting about the Vectrex controller as well is because you've got this sort of hard edge here and a rounded end here, uh, my brother-in-law discovered that if what we do is actually design it or, or place it in like this and then just rotate it, that sits in there really nicely. Like it doesn't have to be, um, uh, it doesn't have to be like jammed in or anything. It, it sort of rocks on that little uh, corner there quite nicely. And that's that in good and solid. It ain't moving anywhere. And of course, the Atari driving controller. And because we had that little bit of flex there, this sits very nicely in here. So there is the controller, um, what do I want to call this thing? I don't know, controller adapter? I'll come up with a name for it, but uh, there we go. They are sitting in there nice and pretty, and they ain't moving for jack. I mean, that's, that's really, really solid. I like it. And here's the final product. So yeah, this really does hold everything very snug and uh, sits nicely on the lap here. So uh, let's give a couple of games of Tsunami a try with this much improved control scheme. Oh yeah, now this feels way more like a real control panel a la the original Tempest Machine. I can do my Super Zapper quite easily. Yeah, it's... Oh, having said that, I did die. Um, yeah, no, it's nice to have this being held firm for the driving controller. It really, really makes a nice difference here. I can be all over the map here, or all over the maze here. And it's no problem at all, and I really like how this thing is holding together here. Let's try some other games. Now don't let the date fool you. This is actually, somebody has hacked the original armor attack to actually use the spinner, and uh, it's a really good control scheme actually. See, this way I can drive using the three button. I can steer like a steering wheel with the driving controller, and I can shoot. So a pretty cool control scheme here. Let's get them. Yeah, come on. Anyway, yeah, no, this is uh, really good. I don't like, ooh. Gotcha. Um, 
not a huge fan that you have to really spin this dial in order to, to make any turns. It could do with a little bit of tightening up, but uh, still, with this um, with this board sitting here, I'm actually pretty pleased. Oh, I got me. Hex is another homebrew that's actually really fun and uses the driving controller. And I put my uh, Star Castle overlay on there because I thought it might look nice with it. Oops. The beginning of the game, it's very, very slow, but it does speed up. You can almost play this just with the driving controller out on its own. You don't really need to use the buttons, but uh, just thought I'd showcase that one. Now, on the subject of Star Castle, we do have this hacked to use this, the driving controller as well. Unfortunately, I'm terrible at Star Castle, but this is quite nice to be able to use the spinner. Well, okay, except for getting killed there. Come on, let's see if I can at least get him once. Oh, no. No good. Now, this game actually brings up one interesting point that uh, I was having some trouble with initially, and then I came up with a solution. But rather than show it off with this game, which I'm dying at horribly here, let me uh, bring up another game. Oh, there we go. Game over. Uh, let me bring up another game that better showcases what I'm going to talk about. Yes, Mindstorm has also been modded to be able to use the driving controller. Um, and I was finding that a little bit difficult compared to the other games, and I'll show you why in a sec here. Love Mindstorm, but it is a rather um, hectic game that you need to really use your buttons a lot for. And I was finding... This is a little bit uh, cramped for me, having both of these things so close together, but I have a solution. My solution is to actually turn the board upside down. Now if I put the controller this way, it's, it does fit, very nice and snug. And this thing, because it's completely radial, it has no up and down, so it doesn't know it's currently um, the wrong way around. And now I'm finding I'm a lot better at being able to hit the buttons and do all the controls, a little bit more like a proper arcade controller now. Yeah, this, this feels like a proper control pen. My hands aren't like cramped and squished together now. Um, this is actually really, really fun doing it this way. Now pole position, I actually prefer to put it back to the original orientation because you're using one and two for the gear up and down quite a lot. second gear. Now just keep it on the road. I do, have an, oh, I do have another controller that I'm using more often for pole position. I'll do a video about that another day. But at least this is doable. Well, I say that, but I'm actually not doing very well here. Seems to be a Universal case of driving games and commentary never mix well. Ooh, stay on the road, Kev. Mm. 
Yeah, darn it. But you see what I mean? It's it's much easier for flipping from gear one to gear two if I've got it back to the original orientation. But I do like the fact that depending on the game, I can just flip the board upside down or whichever way, and it works really well. And the other thing about um, driving games, like I say, I've got another controller that I could use for this. But I, um, I spoke with the uh, fellows who made Knox because uh, they're members of the Atari Age Forum, and uh, I asked them a question there. I was like, when I heard that this uh, driving controller is supported, I was like, oh, that's great, because I, I love this control scheme, generally speaking. Um, I did say to the guy, so since Knox and I believe Death Chase really only use one button, uh, surely you'll be able to make it so the game is fully playable this way, right? We'll just drive around and do our thing. And uh, the developer said, actually, that doesn't really happen. And the reason is this button here is not recognized by the Vectrex. I'm not sure what um, particular range of code it's on or whatever, but it's never usable because the, the Vectrex just doesn't operate on whatever level of logic this button is on. So that's why all of these games have used uh, this controller for all the button pressing, like in Tsunami, etc. But um, you can hook up a driving controller, you can just never use that button. Hence, I thought, well, then in that case, I don't need to worry about it being encased in this. So this is actually a really good control scheme. It's a little bit um, ugly. I mean, I got all these like chips left over from the uh, the shaving job that we did on it. I'm very glad that the glue is holding up. This is uh, a really, really, for what is a very, very bare bones control holder, I, I'm really liking it. It's very, very solid and it works really, really well. I might give it a paint job or something. I'm not sure. I mean, it needs, um, the only worry I have is if I have any kind of a paint on here as I'm pulling out the controller, is it going to rub off on, on this thing here? I mean, uh, Atari controllers are dime a dozen, as I said before, but Vectrex controllers, I want to kind of keep this thing in pretty decent uh, condition if I can. So I don't know if I will paint it or not, but regardless, um, yeah, I just thought I'd uh, hack together a little um, board controller holder because now these games are a lot more enjoyable since I've got my hands in a more stable position. I thought you might uh, like seeing that little project come to life. All right, until next time, we'll see you down the rabbit hole.